Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Didn't Dr. Seligman say anything before he died, Watney? Yes, yes, he did. I didn't think it wise to tell Sparshot. He muddles things up, sir. Seligman said, I know how they did it. It's all done by mirrors. Mrs. Peel looked down at the crumpled envelope in her hand. It had been the one that Frederick Williams was scribbling on when he met his death. On the back of the envelope, Mrs. Peel noticed for the first time an outline drawing of a lighthouse. Looking up and gazing out to sea, the first thing she noticed was the point jutting out into the distance, upon which was a lighthouse. All done by mirrors. Mm. I think I know what my next port of call will be. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 4 of this story, in which John Steed realizes why Emma Peel is playing this case solo and follows through on the suggestion that it's all done by mirrors. <laughs> Young Watney was slightly more than confused. On his first major case, he was investigating security leaks at the Carmadoc Research Establishment. Since he'd arrived with Mrs. Peel, three men had died and Mrs. Peel had been viciously attacked. Watney thought of mother and was worried. Mrs. Peel's approach to the whole affair didn't help him either. Her method seemed highly unorthodox. She'd left all the inside work to him and appeared intent on chasing vague clues all over the surrounding countryside. And now... You're, you're going out to that lighthouse, Mrs. Peel? That's right. But, but why? I, I, I mean, I don't see. I'll tell you why when I've been there. Bye for now, Watney. Watney, Watney. Oh, and if you get through to Mother, give Steve my love. Goodbye. Mrs. Peel swept out, leaving Watney even more baffled. A short while after that, Mrs. Peel, at the wheel of her car, headed up the cliff road. She parked skillfully by the rocky path that led to the lighthouse. The lighthouse looked remarkably like the one drawn on the envelope. Mrs. Peel walked boldly up the path and banged on the door. Kettridge, a tough, rugged seaman dressed in traditional clothes, trousers stuffed into sea boots, a blue turtleneck sweater and a grubby cap, stood in the doorway. Yeah? I'd like to see the lighthouse keeper. There isn't one. Pardon? This lighthouse doesn't function anymore. It's a private residence. Kettridge turned away and was about to close the heavy door when Mrs. Peel pushed by him and found herself in the hallway. Well, in that case, I'd like to speak to the owner. Now, just look here. You can't push your way in. What's the trouble, Kettridge? The speaker was a young, handsome, intelligent-looking man, extremely well-dressed, coming down the stairs. Can I help you at all? She wants to see the owner, busting her way in here. Well, you must forgive Kettridge. He isn't used to visitors and sometimes becomes a little too diligent. I'm Timothy Barlow, the Colonel's secretary. Mrs. Emma Peel, how do you do? How do you do? Well, Mrs. Peel, the Colonel doesn't like to be disturbed with uh, trivialities. So perhaps you would enlarge upon the nature of your business. Well, it's about the man who fell over the cliffs here recently. Now, look here. I would hardly say it's a triviality, Mr. Barlow. Hmm. As you say, hardly. Uh, excuse me one moment. Barlow moved across the room and picked up a brass speaking tube. He blew down it, listened into it, and then spoke. Uh, Colonel, I have a Mrs. Peel down here. She would like a word with you, if it's at all possible. Yes, yes, I think so. Uh, yes, sir, very good. Barlow replaced the speaking tube, smiled, and said, The Colonel Withers will see you. This way. Barlow led the way towards the stairs and began to climb them. Mrs. Peel followed. The Colonel in the lighthouse? Yes, it's odd, isn't it? 
very simple explanation, then. The colonel comes from a family of soldiers. Yet at heart, he always wanted to be a... A sailor? Yes, that's it. So when he retired, he bought this place. Um, uh, how long does this go on for? The stairs? Oh, about a year. What? Oh, that's the colonel's little joke. Uh, 365 steps, you see. So he says it takes about a year to climb 365. them. 365? I wish you hadn't told me that. Oh, it's not all that bad. No, it isn't that. It's just that I'm bound to have to count them. Lead on, Mr. Barlow. While Mrs. Peel was expending a great deal of energy climbing the stairs of the lighthouse, John Steed and Mother were lying back in a couple of floating plastic armchairs in the swimming pool. Mother appeared to be fishing. He tugged on a length of line. Steed opened an eye, began to open his mouth, and then shut both. Ah, champagne, Steed. Steed opened both eyes. Mother had pulled some rather costly French champagne from the water. It would help to pass the time. Thank you, Mother. Mother expertly opened the champagne, reached for a glass that rested on the floating table, and poured Steed a drink. Steed, wobbling a bit in his seat, took it without a drop being spilt. Blended. Far too precious to waste. Charles, Steed. Charles. What may reported in? Uh, not yet. The red telephone could ring at any moment, telling us that the case is over. I rather doubt it. Watney is too raw and experienced. As I've said before, we all have to start somewhere. That low. I bet he wouldn't mind swapping places with you right now. Well, I might be wishing the same thing. Anyway, Emma Peel is there. She is well able to look after herself. Uh, extremely capable young woman. Mm. You said so yourself. One of the best operators you've got. The best. Well, then, she's a woman. As such, she is vulnerable. Steed, those kind of feelings are strictly contrary to the rules of... Rules, uh... Mother? <laughs> yes. You've never acknowledged them, let alone abided by them. I can't help it. It's my way of working. And this charade of close arrest. Now, you promised I could get out of it if I wanted to. Well, I can't stop you. But I can remind you... Remind that... me? Of what? Remember when you were taught to fly, Steve? Of course. Remember your first solo. If someone had snatched the controls from you then, up there alone, head in the clouds, wouldn't you have felt cheated? You mean Watney? But he's nothing compared to Mrs... Uh, solo for Mrs. Peel. Exactly. <laughs> As I have said, we've all got to start somewhere. Now, what about some more champagne, eh? <laughs> In the lighthouse, Barlow and Emma Peel paused for breath at one of the small windows and gazed out. A long way down? Uh, only a short way up. Just get through the month of December and we're there. <laughs> Thirty days past September, April, June and all the rest have... Right. Thirty-one, yes. thirty, twenty-nine, twenty-eight, twenty-seven, twenty-six. One. Yes, well, we're here. Go in. Uh, Mrs. Peel, sir. Uh, Mrs. Peel, uh, Colonel Withers. How do you do, Colonel? Spartan, the Amazonian. I beg your pardon? Not the slightest bit out of breath. I like that. Physical fitness, I like it. How do, Mrs. Peel? Well, Valley, you must have thought it important to have brought Mrs. Peel all the way up here. It's about uh, poor Mr. Guthrie, sir. Oh, relative of yours, huh? Mm. Exactly, a friend. I'm just interested. Idle curiosity, morbid interest. Mm. Intimate concern. Ah, <laughs> that's better. Not enough concern nowadays, not half enough. Well, now, I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, I haven't asked for help yet. <laughs> hey, you got spirit, eh? Like that, yes, like that. Still can't help, never even knew the man. Oh, perhaps you saw him. Hey, saw him? Did I, Barlow? Well, it's uh, possible, sir, when you were in the villages. No, sir. I mean... No, I meant from over here. This lighthouse overlooks the cliff head, and I thought... Well, perhaps through your telescope. This one, I mean. Oh, interested in telescopes, are you? One doesn't look at land through a telescope, ma'am. Look through it now. Go on. Go along. Look through it. Oh, all right. I always like these things. What do you see, eh? Um, the sea. Exactly. That's what you see, the sea. The great grand rolling ocean and ships 
Often ships, grubby little tankers, liners, ships under sail, under steam, underway to exotic destinations. No, Mrs. Field, you won't find me looking at the land. Nevertheless, if one swings it around like this... Mrs. Field swung the telescope towards the cliffs. On a clear day, you could practically reach out and touch the cliffs and almost shake hands with your visitors. Oh, I've already told you that I never look at the... Visitors? Well, one visitor. She's just getting out of a taxi. She could have a long stay in mind, judging from the luggage. Barlow! Barlow moved forward, excused himself to Mrs. Peel, seized the telescope and gazed through it. Hmm. No idea who she is, sir. Well, find out. You know how I hate being disturbed. Colonel Withers shot Mrs. Peel a significant glance. She took the hint. Barlow had already left the tower. So you didn't know Mr. Guthrie, Colonel? That is correct. Then I don't suppose you knew his friend, Mr. Williams, either. No, probably not. Better ask Barlow. You rely very much upon Barlow. He deals with the trivialities, Mrs. Peel. The trivialities. Thank you, Colonel. Mrs. Peel left the Colonel and began the descent of the 365 stairs. Halfway down, she paused and looked out of the window. There was a lighted cigarette resting on the window ledge. Mrs. Peel noted that she wasn't alone on the spiral stairway. Then she heard it. The unmistakable sound of a gun being loaded. Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen.